There's a look at our planet this afternoon from a height of 22,000 miles above the ground. The Pacific North American Oscillation expected to go significantly positive by early next week, which is not a cause of anything but more of a reflection of ridging in western Canada and troughing in the Aleutians and the southeastern U.S. that tends to produce a north-to-south flow through the northern plains and central Canada. El Nino, La Nina still neutral, but we're expecting La Nina conditions to set in this winter. Some new developments in the Atlantic, the Hurricane Center forecasting an area west of the Cape Verde Islands with moderate potential for development over the next week. This change likely due to more data coming in on a wave that's exiting Western Africa. The GFS showing that wave passing the Cape Verde Islands right here. Let me outline that for you. That's around Saturday or Sunday, and then it's going to strengthen a bit going into next week. And there it is starting to move a little bit north, a good distance from the Leeward Islands by late next week. Now, notice we're at 168 hours. So this is where we start to lose accuracy on these dynamical models. And we have it drifting a little bit out in that area east of the Bermuda Triangle. Uh, what's the Bermuda Triangle? Uh, what is that? Something like that. Anyway, yeah, still quite a distance to the east. And even by the 240-hour point, still loitering out there in the Atlantic. So just not very much going on. This could be the next one. But, you know, this is crystal ball forecasting. Anyway, looks quiet over the next week. In the Eastern Pacific, a different story, a mini tropical storm along the Mexican coast, 35 knots on that, 1006 millibars, so not very deep at all. And I do like the IVT charts because those help draw your attention to these disturbances. That's where we have significant moisture advection taking place. So the GFS carrying that to the west, some models have taken that inland it's a little bit indeterminate because you know it's a very small system it's very hard to sample it numerically so a little bit of uncertainty with that a couple of waves approaching the mexican coast right there exiting guatemala and uh, this one could develop pretty good by late next week now there is a little bit of concern around guatemala and belize late next week there's been some troughiness in that area some convergence you can see the wind vectors right here kind of spiraling so this will be one area to watch something could come together around the yucatan or in the bay of campeche but at this time nothing really definite the surface chart this afternoon rather nondescript only three isobars the 10 12 the 1016 and the 1020. There should probably be a 1024 in here, but it's been smoothed out. The isobars here come not from the observations, but from the GFS model. So a little bit of weirdness in the data, but overall, the general picture, broad, weak high in the northeastern U.S., low pressure in the northern plains, and there's this weak front transiting the Rockies. Some cooler air back behind it, heavily modified Pacific air, but just enough instability and dynamics to get some organized severe storms going in the Four Corners area. If you look at the thickness plots right here, there's uh, at least five or six contours. So this shows definite baroclinicity from the southwestern U.S. into the northern plains. And with that, we're going to find stronger winds aloft, which helps create a sheared environment and help storms organize and produce long-lived structures. The Storm Prediction Center currently has a slight risk from about Aspen to Farmington, New Mexico. We've had some severe thunderstorm warnings further to the west around Moab. Now if we go to the forecast tools and mesoanalysis and click on the Rockies, that's not the Rockies, let's change that sector. We can find some evidence of that shear. Let me get this recentered for you. There it is, wind shear up at the top. At first, we're going to look at the upper air analysis. 300 millibars, that's where it's at. You can see the 70 knot winds aloft coming in from the south, pretty much parallel to those thickness lines. So definitely some good dynamics 
spreading over that region. Now if we go to wind shear at the top, the surface through 6 kilometer is the classic measure of bulk shear and certainly some high amounts across eastern Utah and western Colorado, especially around Moab where they're getting that activity now. They also have the storm relative felicity, which is more controlled by the low level dynamics, the low level jet, strong pressure falls at the surface and so on. I don't think that's a big factor today. We can verify that with some of the low level plots. 850, that's gonna kind of intersect the terrain, but I think that's about all we can do with that in 700 millibars. And we do see some pretty good moisture there. The wind flow is what's important. And we do get that showing up at 700 millibars, but that appears to be fairly unidirectional. If we go to the photograph map, we can see a lot of straight line photographs, none of those curved photographs like you get in Oklahoma. This would be a good time to segue to the 500 millibars for the uh, North American continent. We see a split flow. There's the northern branch across Canada and a weaker southern branch affecting that part of the Four Corners area. At 500 millibars up at about 18,000 feet, about 30 to 40 knots through Colorado and troughing extending from the bitter roots into Nevada and California. And that's the result of cold air advection, although the air mass highly modified. Also some troughing on the East Coast with a modifying polar air mass there as well. Over the next few days, what we're going to see is this trough gradually migrating northeast into the Canadian prairies. Some of it affecting the northern plains, but not very much southward extent. In fact, this ridge will be holding tight for the next week or so, producing a heat wave across the deep south, the Midwest, and Texas. Towards the end of the period, the weekend after this one, ridging across the Rockies, a couple of upper level lows, one across the Great Lakes, one off the coast of California, and then at the very end of the period for Wednesday, the 22nd. This low starts to approach California, might get some unsettled weather there. Unsettled in the Great Lakes and Quebec and Ontario, and the fire hose coming right into British Columbia as fall gets its start. Early fall, British Columbia brings in those atmospheric rivers, and we're going to see that start shifting down the coast going into October. In the northeastern U.S., temperatures continued warming today. Highs in the 70s across Maine and New England into the 80s from Virginia and Pennsylvania and the Midwest. 90s were starting to appear in western Kentucky, western Illinois, and in Iowa. Coastal flood advisory still in effect on the Atlantic coast from uh, about, well, there is one advisory around the Stamford and Bridgeport area of Connecticut. Another in the Chesapeake Bay area, those have been trimmed back from a few days ago. In the Great Lakes, dense fog advisories were in effect earlier this morning in parts of western Superior and western Lake Michigan. In the southeastern U.S., continued strong northeasterly flow, helping to support a stationary front through southern Florida. Highs today ranged from the 80s across Carolinas, Georgia, and the Florida Peninsula to the 90s in Alabama and Mississippi. And we picked up mid-90s for this afternoon from Louisiana to Arkansas, Memphis, and Missouri. Coastal flood advisories continue in the Carolinas and near Jacksonville due to high tides and also flood advisories in parts of southern Florida. In the southern plains, rather quiet, another day of heat in Texas, mid-90s expected in all the big cities, Houston, San Antonio, Dallas, Oklahoma City, Little Rock, with low 90s in West Texas. And at the very end, I can see a little bit of a hint of anticyclonic flow. You see that going on right there? I think there's an upper level high right over the Arklatex. Let's take a look at the charts. That satellite imagery was showing cumulus clouds at about 850 millibars. And sure enough, there it is, an 850 millibar high. And around the western periphery of that, there is some moisture starting to flow northward, starting to get the uh, 10 gram per kilogram line right there, which is starting to get 50s and 60s dew points. Some of that already has arrived in Minnesota, supporting some storms along this warm front.
And just a quick look forward. Low-level jet for later tonight in Kansas. Let me back that up to 1 a.m. 50 knots around. Uh, it's going to be around Colby. So there is so yeah a little bit of action going on out there, but just not a whole lot of moisture coming north because we have sent a lot of drier air into the Gulf. And going up to Saturday night and Sunday, moisture continues flowing north. So we see continued chances of precipitation all through the Great Plains through the weekend. The northern plains contending with a lot of that heat from the central U.S., mid-90s across all of Kansas, 90s into Nebraska and Iowa, and 80s further north. We do have a slight risk of severe weather from the Black Hills into southeastern Montana. A few cells going up there and weaker cells across central Minnesota where we have a marginal risk for severe weather, the primary hazards, isolated large hail and isolated high winds. Across the southwestern U.S., large area of showers and storms moving through the Rockies as that weak front crosses the mountains. And we do see that elongated flow, the sheared anvils. That's always a sign that we have the potential for storm organization. Let's take a look at the Grand Junction radar. We did have some severe thunderstorm warnings earlier around Moab. Right there, the very first frame. Can't quite catch it, but that's it. And these clusters of storms moving into western Colorado at this time. Other cells extend from east of Farmington down to Gallup and Grants and into the White Mountains. Overall, in the Rockies, we saw mild to warm conditions. 83 at Denver today, 90 at Pueblo. And in the wake of this thunderstorm cluster and in the modified air right there, we were looking for 80s for the most part. In the deserts, some rather warm conditions, although milder than what we've seen over the past week. Phoenix expecting 101 with most other areas in the 90s for today. California looking at 80s west of the deserts. Downtown Los Angeles expecting 81 and 73 at San Francisco. In the Pacific Northwest, in between weather systems, we see northerly flow right there in the Bitterroots, southerly flow offshore. That's always an indicator that there's some anticyclonic flow in between. Temperatures in the 70s, though we did find 80s east of the Cascades in the Columbia Basin and 80s in southwestern Oregon. Then we head out into the Pacific and it's becoming increasingly stormy out there. There's that frontal boundary helping to support that polar front jet, which is routing moisture into British Columbia. In Alaska this afternoon, cooler air mass starting to come into the interior. We have a winter weather advisory today and early tomorrow on the north side of the Alaska range, including Highway 3 from Summit Lake to Healy and clear. Two to four inches of snow are possible there as populated areas of southern Alaska get their first winter storm of the season. In Canada, not much going on except for this polar Frontal system in the Banks and Victoria Island area. Occluded front down to the south triple point across Great Slave Lake. And we still have wildfire alerts for parts of Alberta, Northwest Territories, Eastern British Columbia. This frontal system will probably start dispersing some of that smoke and making it more localized. Nothing much for Eastern Canada. Frontal system in the Hudson Bay area in Quebec. And very nice conditions in the southern part of the country, Toronto, Montreal, all see in fair skies and temperatures in the 60s and lower 70s. Looking at the temperature trends over the next week or so, no tropical weather to contend with. We're mostly going to be affected by that big ridge and the infusion of slightly cooler air from the west into parts of the northern and high plains. So for tomorrow, hot all the way from Houston to St. Louis and Des Moines, and that will keep spreading eastward Sunday and Monday. And just not much change into midweek. More of the same, especially for Memphis, Paducah, Louisville, and just a carbon copy for Thursday. There's a look at your overnight lows for tonight. Cold in Maine, 40s and 50s, that sounds really nice. Elsewhere, mild conditions, some cooler air across the Great Basin area where strong radiational cooling is starting to set in. 
with that drier Pacific air. And elsewhere in the central U.S. underneath that ridge, 60s and 70s. Looking at our forecast starting with tonight and going into tomorrow, some showery conditions into the morning, just west of Amarillo and into the Colorado High Plains. Heat wave starts building across the central U.S., bring that up to the peak heating time, and there you go. Just maybe a few showers and storms in Missouri. Otherwise, most areas are going to be dry. So widespread mid-90s from Houston to Missouri and Iowa, 95 for Des Moines and 96 for St. Louis. Also looking at a marginal risk for severe all across Milwaukee, Chicago, and Indianapolis for isolated large hail and damaging wind ahead of this warm front. And a marginal risk of severe across the Dakotas and parts of the High Plains from Akron, Colorado to Tucumcari and possibly all the way down to El Paso. Again, just looking for isolated large hail and damaging winds. Very good chances for rain all across this area along that dissipating cold front, and it will bring a brief respite from the heat. Then we go into Sunday, this frontal system moves up into the Dakotas. That'll be the best chance for any rain. New Pacific system working into the northwestern U.S. That'll move quickly into the Bitterroots for Monday. Hundreds return to Needles and Phoenix for Monday. This frontal system continues moving to the east. Heat wave continues in the Midwest and the Deep South. Then we go into Wednesday, increasing rain chances in southern Florida, Wednesday and especially Thursday. Mid-100s continue in the southwestern deserts Wednesday and Thursday, and very slow cooling as this modified Canadian air moves southward late next week. Looks like maybe by Friday and Saturday, some big changes for the Midwest, the Great Lakes, and the Northern Plains. That's going to be a definite weather change for about 9 or 10 days from now, although we're going to have to wait and see if that actually comes together. And looks like some activity as well for the western U.S. as another storm system moves into California, Nevada, and Utah. And that will be all for this edition of Forecast Lab. Wanted to try to get this out a little bit earlier. So I hope you find it useful and informative. And we'll see you back here on Monday for the supporters. Remember to get signed up on Patreon if you want to get that third episode of the week. Otherwise, we'll see you back here on Tuesday. Take care and have a great one. Bye-bye.